To start out this quiz review, I want to point out that you need to be intimately familiar with this equation. Centripetal force is mass times velocity squared over the radius. You need to know that this equation comes from the idea that net force equals mass times acceleration. And when we're talking about a circle, the net force is the centripetal force, and the acceleration is v squared over the radius of the circle. You need to be able to solve this equation for any variable. In fact, I recommend right now solving this equation for, so solve for m, solve this equation for v, and solve this equation for r. The equation is already solved for fc, so you don't need to do that. Solve the equation for m, v, and r. Pause the video to do that, and when you hit play again, I'll have the responses for you. So pause the video solve for m, v, and r. All right, now that you've tried solving for m, v, and r, <clears throat> all right, here are the solutions. m equals the centripetal force times the radius over v squared. Velocity equals the square root of the centripetal force times radius over the mass. And the radius equals mass times velocity squared over the centripetal force. You might ask yourself, do I need to memorize all three of those? And the answer is no. You do, however, need to memorize this. Whether you have a formula sheet or not, you should just know that this is centripetal force. Centripetal force is mass times velocity squared over the radius. Know that it's the net force, and know that it comes out of Newton's second law, F net equals ma. So this equation, Fc equals mv squared over r, definitely have memorized. Shouldn't have to look at a formula sheet for that. Here are three questions that you need to be able to answer. These are the very general forms. Um, the quiz will obviously will be more specific. It might give you a specific situation than ask you to, to determine a direction. Which way is the net force? Well, let's draw a circle for talking about this. Anytime we have an object moving in a circle, and these rules will apply whether that circle is vertical, up and down, or horizontal, flat, like a car might go in a circle. So which way is the net force? Well, the net force think about it, which way is the net force, is always toward the center of the circle. So in the same color I made that note, let's suppose we have an object going in a circle this direction, and the object is right here, then the net force will always point toward the center. Now that is not a free body diagram that I just drew, because centripetal force is not a force itself. It is a category of force or a sum of all forces. So it, net force just means the sum of all the forces. The centripetal force means the sum of all the forces. It's not a force itself. It is a sum of forces. Okay, which way is the acceleration? Think about that. The acceleration must always be toward the center because Newton's second law tells us F net equals ma force and acceleration are vectors. Nothing's changing the direction of those vectors, so if your F net has to be toward the center, then your acceleration has to be toward the center. And we call that centripetal acceleration. So, acceleration is always toward the center. Finally, instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity is the way that the object would travel if you let it go at a point. And remember that instantaneous velocity is always tangent to the circle, so it touches the circle exactly one place and then continues on forever. So the instantaneous velocity will always be tangent to the circle. And if you don't remember what tangent means, it means it touches the circle at one place, so it's going to touch it at the place where we let the object go, and then continue in a straight line in the way the object was moving. My line actually looks curved there, so you'd want to do better. See, it looks a little more straight now. Okay, If we let it go here, that would be the instantaneous velocity. If we let it go over here, if we let it go over here, now, if our circle, if our object were traveling the opposite direction in the circle, so let's say now I have a circle with an object traveling this way, and I let the object go at the same relative place on the circle, this time the velocity would be the other way. So it depends on which way your circle is turning, and the object would just keep going the way that it was going right here. So right here the object's going that way, here it's going this way, here this way. And if we let it go, it just continues in a straight line, instantaneous velocity. It's like when I swung my key around, and whenever I let it go, it just kept going in a straight line. Here are three general steps for solving circular motion problems. Usually these steps 
also are points on the grading rubric for free response. So even if you think you can do a problem without these, it doesn't matter because you won't get the points for the problem if you don't do these steps. First, draw a picture if one isn't provided. So let's say I have a problem that says a ball is swung in a vertical circle, so up and down, on a string. So I would draw the picture. So I've got the ball, and I have a string. And the ball is being swung in a circle. The problem doesn't tell you a direction. You can just pick one. So I'm going to say this ball is spinning like this, counterclockwise. Step two, draw a free body diagram. So if I were to draw a free body diagram of this situation for step two, at the bottom of that circle, since this is a vertical circle, there is definitely gravity. And that ball is on a string, so there is tension. OK? Now you might think, well, where is your centripetal force? Centripetal force is not a force. It is a sum of forces. So then, if I wanted to find out the centripetal force, I would add these. Now this is a poor free body diagram, because right now it looks like these two forces are the same size, meaning there would be no centripetal force. So I should actually have drawn my tension a little bigger, because we do need the forces to add and end up with a force toward the center, our centripetal force. Next, when solving a problem, use n minus out equals centripetal force. So here, the tension would be an n force. So if I'm doing n minus out, I would have my tension. You could use t or ft minus my out force. Here, gravity points out. That gravity would point down, and tension would point in. So I have gravity pointing out. And once I found the difference between those two, n minus out, I'd have the centripetal force. And then you could then say, oh, well, centripetal force is mv squared over r, so t minus fg equals m v squared over r. And then you can answer almost any question about that object. What's its tension? What's the force of gravity? What's its mass? What's its velocity? What's the radius of the circle? How long is the string? All that kind of stuff. So general problem solving tips, be sure to use those. They're usually worth points, especially these two. On any free response question, those two would be worth points. And finally, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take this picture, and it points A, B, and C. I want you to, one, draw a free body diagram for each point. So you're going to have three free body diagrams. Two, I want you to write an in and out equation, including replacing FC with the more specific what centripetal force is, mv squared over r. So for each one, draw a free body diagram, write the in minus out statement, pause the video, do that, we'll look at the answer when you come back. So pause the video, draw a free body diagram, write in minus out for each one. All right, so hopefully you've done that, and hopefully it was clear that you shouldn't just write the words n minus out equals mv squared over r. Put the forces in there. If you haven't done that, stop and go ahead and put the forces in. All right, I'll color code to keep this from getting too messy. Let's do A is red. So for point A, A, first draw a free body diagram. Okay, when the car gets to point A, it will have gravity down, and it will have a normal force up. I made the normal force smaller because I already know that this is a circle and my centripetal force is going to be directed toward the center of the circle so the force down here has to be bigger than the force up. You know, if I didn't know that right away I could see it when I wrote my equation. The in minus out equation. So forces toward the center of that circle, the hill is a circular object, the force toward the center, the in force, is gravity. And then normal force is pointing away from the center of the circle. So normal force, and you can use n, that's fine, equals m v squared over r. Now if I were actually asked to solve a problem here, I would go ahead and write fg equals mg. Whoops. I'd write the mg minus fn m v squared over r. So remember, you can replace fg with mg. Okay, let's do part B in blue. Step one, draw a free body diagram. So we'll have a force of gravity, and that car is on something, so we'll have a normal force. And there's no circle there. 
it's a straight line. So I then know that whatever my in and out forces are, they would give me zero. Or I could do it the other way and say, well, there's no circle, so centripetal force equals zero. Whatever you want to do. Either way, no circle, no centripetal force. And so the key part is just realizing no circle, therefore no centripetal force. And finally, point C. Let's do it in purple. C. First, draw a free body diagram. I'll have a normal force, and I'll have a gravitational force. And I can already see that the circle is right here, and so the centripetal force will point up, meaning my up force has to be bigger. So when I subtract them, I have to end up with a net force pointing up. And when I write the in minus out statement, the in force, in minus out equals FC. The force toward the center of the circle here is the normal force. Gravity points away, whoops, I keep writing equal. Force toward the center is the normal force. Gravity points away, and that equals M V squared over R. And again, if I was asked to solve a problem, I'd go ahead and do Fn minus Mg equals M V squared over R. Okay. Now this is a very basic example. There will be questions that ask you to take this further and actually solve for variables. But if you can do this setup, you've got the physics of it. And the rest is working through the algebra. If you need to watch this slide again, go back about four minutes. I highly encourage it. And that's it. See you later.